Around 6,000 years ago, a new kind of predator arrived in the Caribbean. Strong, versatile, and clever, this creature had profound impacts upon its ecosystem. And that creature was us. Since that fateful day when humans arrived, the Caribbean has lost a greater percentage of its large animals than anywhere else on the planet. In fact, out of the eight countries with the highest proportion of threatened species, three are in the Caribbean. What this means is that many of its endemic species have gone extinct. In this video, we'll go through each and every one of them, uncover what made them special, and why they disappeared. The story begins around 32 million years ago. The end of the Oligocene brought about a massive drop in temperatures and therefore sea level, connecting isolated ecosystems together. This, as you'd expect, allowed animals to disperse across the newly formed land bridges, and one of those to do so were sloths. Before sea levels rose again, they had managed to make their way to the far north of the Caribbean evolving into their own family, Megalochnidae. Very different from the ones we know today, the Megalochnids were ground sloths. As time went on, mainland ground sloths grew to massive sizes, possibly surpassing Asian elephants. But in the Caribbean, they stayed relatively small. Without fearsome predators capable of taking down large herbivores, evolution took them on a different path. Although compared to their modern tree dwelling counterparts, they were giants. The Cuban ground sloth weighed as much as 270 kilograms, comparable in size to a black bear. Some of these animals became much smaller, however. Neocnus from Cuba weighed in at only 8 kilograms, roughly the same as a koala. Its small size and anatomy suggests that Neocnus was semi arboreal. Feeding in the canopy would have meant they occupied a different niche and could coexist with the larger sloths. Since the Caribbean remained uninhabited for much longer than the mainland, its ground sloths survived for 5,000 more years, coinciding exactly with when the first people arrived in the Caribbean. These slow and rather defenseless animals would have made for easy meals and were soon completely wiped out. But sloths are not the only medium-sized tree-dwelling mammal. Primates are perhaps the most successful animals in the canopy. Despite this, primates are entirely absent from the Caribbean islands. But when scientists were searching in Jamaica's Longmore Cave, they discovered something strange, the remains of a monkey. Based on these bones, the so-called Jamaican monkey was believed to be a relative of night monkeys. Although DNA extracted from their fossils shows they were related to the Titi monkeys. First arriving in Jamaica around 11 million years ago, they soon evolved their own unique traits. With the legs of a rodent and very few teeth, it's believed the Jamaican monkey filled the niche of a sloth, making it unlike any other primate. Possibly descending from this animal are two kinds of fossil monkeys from Hispaniola. These monkeys survived to European arrival with records of monkeys on Jamaica dating to 1700. The reasons for their disappearance are unclear. Possible causes such as disease, hunting, and habitat loss are most plausible. The fossil record of the Caribbean shows us an animal with no living counterparts, a creature so distinct that their closest living relative diverged from them 57 million years ago. They are the Nesophontes, more commonly known as the West Indies shrews. Filling the region's niche of shrews, the Nesophontes were small insectivores. With their remains consisting of seven species, it's obvious that they were common. The latest remains indicate they survived until 1700 CE on the Cayman Islands. The simultaneous disappearance of all seven species can be blamed on one man, Christopher Columbus. One by one, he introduced rats to many of the Caribbean islands. These rats outcompeted the Nesophontes and led to their extinction. Whilst invasive species are to blame for countless extinctions, human hunting can be just as detrimental. Growing up to 2.4 meters and 270 kilograms, the Caribbean monk seal was a large species. This seal was once common all across the Caribbean Sea, sometimes being found in groups of over a hundred. With no natural predators, the Caribbean monk seal had no fear of humans. This combined with difficulty moving on land made them an easy target for hunters. 
In fact, on Christopher Columbus's second voyage, his crew killed eight seals. Small-scale hunting continued for centuries but rapidly sped up during the slave trade. Plantation machinery needed huge amounts of oil and seals were the main source, resulting in thousands being killed. By 1850, they had become so rare that commercial hunting was no longer viable. Over the next century, not a single conservation measure was implemented and sightings continued to become rarer. In 1952, the species was seen for the last time, 15 years before it was recognised as endangered. Although it's strange for a large mammal to disappear without any attention, the same can't be said about snakes. Remains dated to 3,500 years ago on Antigua belong to a yet to be named species of boa. Although never documented, it's almost certain that humans were responsible for its disappearance. The St. Croix racer was seen, however. Inhabiting the island of the same name, it was first discovered in 1862, the only time it would ever be seen. Its extinction was likely due to predation by mongooses, as the Antiguan racer only survives on small mongoose-free islands. The lack of any surveys for this species mean that although unlikely, it could still be out there. Situated in the middle of the ocean between Jamaica and Haiti lies a seemingly barren island known as Navassa. With no connection to the larger land masses, only species brought about by random rafting could make their home there, and seven reptiles did. Beginning in the 1800s, the island was exploited for fertilizers, altering the natural habitats. All of this caused the extinction of the native dwarf boa, rhinoceros iguana, and curly-tailed lizard. Further lizard extinctions occurred to the east, including the Martinique giant amoeba, the Guadalupe amoeba, the Virgin Islands giant anole, and curly-tailed lizards from Antigua and Martinique, all succumbing to introduced predators. It's worth noting a further 32 of the Caribbean's reptiles are considered possibly extinct. But due to a lack of surveys, it's likely that many of them are still surviving. It's a common misconception that giant tortoises were only found on the Galapagos and Aldabra, but they were once found across many of the world's island chains. And as one of the largest tropical archipelagos, it's not surprising that the Caribbean had its own collection. Fossils found so far show 10 different species, although none were as big as their counterparts in the Galapagos. Many of the Caribbean species were adapted to the dry forests that were much more widespread in the Ice Age, and thus they developed adaptations for these environments. But when the Ice Age came to an end, the area of suitable habitat shrunk to smaller refuges. This made them much more vulnerable to human hunting, and by 1400 they had all but disappeared. Perhaps the strangest creatures we'll cover today are the Selenodons. These venomous nocturnal insectivores are rarely seen. Selenodons are the Nesophontes' closest relatives and one of the most evolutionary distinct mammals. And since the Nesophontes are extinct, they diverged from all other species 73 million years ago. Although two species survive to this day, an additional two species from Cuba and Hispaniola were brought to extinction, just like the Nesophontes disappearing due to invasive species. And up until recently, the Cuban Selenodon would have been on this list. Always a rare species, by the 1970s, the animal was believed to have become entirely extinct. But in 1974, they were discovered to be clinging on in Cuba's far east. Unfortunately, they are still in danger today and receive very little conservation attention. Across the world, no group of animals are facing as many extinctions as amphibians, and the loudest amphibians in the world are all native to the island of Puerto Rico. The Cokie's call can measure up to 100 decibels from one meter away. Despite some species being so common that they are seen as pests, others are confined to just a single patch of forest. One of the most elusive is the golden koki. Only ever found at a single site, its former habitat has been completely destroyed, and with no sighting since 1981, it's almost certainly extinct. The web-footed koki was much more widespread than its cousin, but ended up having the same fate. Its once abundant population suddenly disappeared in 1976, becoming another victim of the chytrid fungus. Out of all groups of animals in the Caribbean, none have been hit as hard as birds. With so many having disappeared, I can only briefly mention each one. 
One of the most interesting, however, were the Nesotrochees or cave rails. Only known from fossils, they are highly distinct, forming their own lineage of gruiform. Being flightless made them especially vulnerable to hunting, and they soon disappeared. The most beloved birds on the planet are possibly the macaws, seven of which are believed to have called the Caribbean home in the recent past. With the majority known from artwork alone, the only species documented in life was the Cuban red macaw. From this species, we can get a good idea of what caused the other macaws to be driven to extinction. Early records describe how the Cuban red macaw was easy to hunt for food, and thousands were taken into captivity as pets. It's easy to imagine the same story repeating itself on smaller islands where populations would have been even lower. Among the other birds wiped out are a significant number of apex predators. The Cuban Titan Hawk, the Cuban Teratorn, Suarez's Giant Eagle, Woodward's Eagle, Emslice Vulture, the Bahamian Caracara, the Cuban Caracara, and the Cuban Kestrel likely preyed upon the large endemic mammals and went extinct alongside them. The largest wave of Extinctions, however, hit with European arrival, yet again due to the invasive species they brought with them. The dominance of birds on islands is primarily due to their ability to fly, but they aren't the only flying animals. Bats are almost always the first mammals to colonize a newly formed island, so it's not surprising the Caribbean had a high diversity three of which have gone extinct all prior to European arrival. Those being the giant ghost-faced bat, the lesser falcate winged bat, and the Puerto Rican flower bat. The reason for their disappearance is unknown and few theories have been made so far, partly due to how little we know about them. Although not extinct, the Cuban crocodile is worth a mention. Known for its intelligence, this aggressive and terrestrial crocodile evolved to take down ground sloths, making it the only crocodilian known to be capable of hunting in packs. The reason I bring this creature up is because it had a much wider range in the past, whilst restricted to just a single swamp in Cuba today. This crocodile once ranged across the northern Caribbean before becoming confined to Cuba just 600 years ago. Invasive species and habitat destruction continue to threaten their existence to this day, causing them to be classified as critically endangered. Across the limestone caves of the Caribbean lurks an iconic rodent, the Hutia. Arriving from South America millions of years ago, the Hutias rapidly grew in size, yet another example of island gigantism. Spreading across the archipelago, they evolved into 21 different species, each ruling its respective ecosystem. Since then, however, introduced predators have eaten 11 of those to extinction. This is most clear in the little swan island Hutia. Whilst most species died out soon after Europeans arrived, Little Swan's small size and remote location meant that it stayed uninhabited until the 1950s. However, the island was used by the USDA to quarantine beef cows before they were sent to the USA. This brought people and their cats to Little Swan. Due to its small size, it wasn't long before the cats ate every single one of them, driving them towards extinction. Two species on Cuba are considered possibly extinct, being last sighted in the 1970s. Luckily for the Hutia, some species still remain. The giant Hutia, however, are all extinct. Despite their name, they are not related to the Hutias and belong to their own family, with the Pacarana being their closest relative. As you could probably guess by their name, the giant Hutia were massive. One particular species, the blunt-toothed giant Hutia, was larger than any rodent alive today, ranging from 50 to 200 kilograms, over double the weight of the capybara. It was this size that made them vulnerable to hunting, and none of them made it to European arrival. Many so-called rice rats also became extinct, including all of the megalomis or giant rice rats. Although most of their decline was caused by invasive species, it was a volcanic eruption in 1902 that sealed their fate. All of the Boromis disappeared as well. Only known from subfossils, we don't know much about them, though they likely had a trait that made them more vulnerable to predation. 